Welcome to The Book Podcast, where we discuss books about the book, the Bible, with your hosts, Scott Moffitt, Gabriel Penfield, and Gary Karwaski. We go as deep as we can go, look as hard as we can look, but we only scratch the surface of the meaning of the book. We only scratch the surface of the meaning of the book. Hello to our listeners. This is the eighth podcast in our answers to the most 10 most Googled questions about the Bible. I'm Scott Moffat. This is my fellow podcasters, Gary Karwaski and Gabriel Penfield, who's a little bit under the weather, but uh, we're praying for him. Please do not forget to subscribe to our podcast and hit the notification bell. The question we examine today again is, should a believer in Jesus Christ drink alcohol even socially. I believe our panel of old guys is divided on this issue, one pro and the other con. The truth is there's been a shift in opinion in conservative conservative evangelicalism in the last 25, 30 so years. Young people are no longer convinced by the old arguments and are willing to follow the absence that was required by traditional churches. So it begs the question, what does the scripture say about the consumption of alcohol by believers. It's been my observation that there is a new openness to participate in drinking within evangelicalism. In fact, it's become the new norm. You might have noticed this trend in your own church where the young people are more accepting of alcohol socially. Today, many pastors would not argue, but would instead advocate for drinking moderately as being an acceptable uh, thing for Christians. Compare that to the mindset, which was just a few years ago, and it's amazing. Abstinence was one of the litmus for sanctification. The standard church constitution stated, we, the godly, do not drink, nor do we smoke. This podcast is intent on exploring the question without drawing a line in the sand or writing a new law. Some ask if this question is really a gray area in the Christian life. That's an excellent question. Paul asserts that the rights of Romans is deter- or believers is determined by being fully convinced in one's own mind about his behavior. So then, offer these thoughts for your consideration. Is alcohol use permitted in Scripture? Is it sinful to drink or not to drink? Well, it's the Christmas season, and parties are the norm for people, and it raises many important questions. Is it wise to drink? Is it unwise to drink? Should a believer drink in public? If not, is it okay to drink in private? Or can you do both? Is it sinful for a believer to drink in front of others who have had issues with it in the past? Does drinking bring in front of other brought in front of others bring into issues of self-control and making others fall? Does drinking bring about a loss of self-control? What does this mean for the committed Christian? The Bible without question, condemns being drunk. But does it rule out drinking? Gary, what are you thinking? What do you think? Is it is drinking a sin? Um, I, I would agree with your assessment at this point. Uh, drunkenness is, a, is prohibited. Mm-hmm. But as far as any uh, specific um, prohibition against drinking any alcoholic beverages, the Bible is far from prohibiting that. Uh, in fact, uh, I believe we can say without question, drinking alcohol in, unto itself is not sin. It's not considered sin in either uh, the Old Testament or in the New Testament. In fact, uh, we've got an interesting psalm here, Psalm 104, 15. Uh, it, it's, it admonishes the Jews to go eat your bread with joy, drink your wine with a merry heart, for God has already approved uh, what you do. So, uh, clearly, there, there is a not a out and out prohibition. In fact, there there may be times uh, when, like in this case, it's it's certainly acceptable uh, before God, at least as far as this Old Testament passage in Psalm 104 is. Okay, in the Old Testament, the Jews were not told not to drink, but there were severe warnings that were given to them, yeah, especially to the leadership of Israel, the elders and the priests and the kings. For example, in Leviticus 10.9, you want to read that for us, Gabriel? 
Or would you like? Yeah, let me check. Leviticus ten nine. Yep. Um. Boo, boo, boo. All right, Leviticus ten. You and your sons are not to drink wine or other fermented drink whenever you go into the tent of meeting, or you will die. This is a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. There you go. And then we have a number six three. You want to read that, Gary? The priests were warned. Yeah, uh, the priests were warned. You shall abstain from wine and strong drink. He shall no longer drink vinegar, whether it's made from wine or strong drink, nor shall he drink any grape juice or any fresh uh, uh, or dried grapes. So there's sort of a, a prohibition uh, to the priestly class. Mm-hmm. And to the kings. Yep. Yep. And But to the ordinary Jew, we find in uh, Deuteronomy 29, 6, you have not eaten bread, nor you drank wine or strong drink in order that you might not you that you might know that I am the Lord, your God. And then there's one to about the Nazarite vow. These are all specially um, special cases, game special verses. Cases. Yes. And we're going to find the same thing in the New Testament. But mm-hmm. uh, Gabe, you want to read Josh? Uh, I'm sorry. Judges 13, 4. Yep. This Judges is 13, the, 4. the Nazarite vow. Yeah. Nazarite vow. Nazarite vow being it's a uh, vow you can make by choice. Um, if you want to maybe serve serve God in a higher standard. In this case, though, it was, it was Samson, whose mom and dad took it for him. Yep. But it says, be careful not to drink wine or strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. Behold, you shall conceive and give birth to a son. And now you should have not drink wine or strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. For the boy shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Okay. So it has these warnings in there, but there's also some general proverbs that are aimed at drinking. For example, Proverbs 23, 29 through 35. Woe has... Excuse me. Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has contentions? Who has complaining? Who has wounds without cause? Who has redness of eyes? Those who linger over wine. Those who go to taste mixed wine. Do not look on the wine when it is red, when it sparkles in the cup, when it goes down smoothly. At the last, it bites like a serpent. And stings with a viper. Well, we can read more of that later, but uh, you get the idea. The flavor here is there's warnings against drinking, especially drunkenness, and it comes with certain issues with it if you become consumed with it. Now, in the New Testament, Gary, we also find warnings about overindulgence. Can you uh, uh, read a couple of those passages for us? Well, from- yeah. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I think the big one. Is mm-hmm. Ephesians five eighteen? Okay, it says, "Be not drunk with wine." The comparison there is, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, as, as a Bible expositor, the whole issue there is as that of control. What is controlling you? And so, I think that particular verse says you should allow the Holy Spirit to control you. Do not allow alco- wine, in this case, or alcoholic beverages, to control you. I like Paul's comment on this when he says, "All things are lawful for me, but not all things are." profitable or edifying or beneficial Mm -hmm. you know it might be right it might be okay to do legally but is it really beneficial to you so um the bible does not forbid christians from drinking right but on the other hand it warns them consistently to be careful on how they go about handling alcohol in first corinthians 8 9 through 13 uh, it comments on this gabe you want to share that with us yeah um, be t- and take care that the liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block for the weak. For if someone sees you who have knowledge dining in an idol's temple, will not his conscience, if he is weak, be strengthened to eat things sacrificed to idols? Um, I'm going to go down a little bit. Therefore, if food causes my brother to stumble, I will never eat meat again, so that I will not cause my brother to stumble. So what's the biblical principle here? Yeah, the biblical principle there is, yes, it might be allowed, right? I I might be able to drink alcohol biblically, but then again, if I am drinking alcohol in the presence of a former alcoholic who's now a Christian, who's struggling with that, right? I'm going to be making that brother stumble. He's going to see that. He's going to be tempted. That's not wise, right? And mm-hmm. Paul says it's not wise to do that because I don't want to make somebody else stumble. Right. We're supposed to walk in the way of wisdom of according to the Proverbs and, and according to the uh, wise sayings in the New Testament. And in fact, in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, we read, whether then you eat or drink, whatever you do, what's the standard? Do all for the glory of God. 
All right. Well, let's talk a little bit, Gary. What does Jesus practice and teach about alcohol? Yeah, does this help us? That gets really interesting. Mm-hmm. It's curious that the very first miracle that mm-hmm. Jesus ever uh, did was at the wedding feast in Cana when they had run out of wine. And so his mother asked him to t- do something about it. Mm-hmm. And so he has them uh, fill up these big jars with water. And then he tells them to dip a ladle into there and give it to the chief steward. And it turns out that that water is turned into wine, not just regular, ordinary wine, but the steward remarks, this is the best wine ever. Mm -hmm. Most people say the, you do the good wine first. And then once people have been feeling it, they substitute the junky wine. But he says, you've left the best wine for last. So it's very curious to me, but let's not miss. Use the text. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's not misuse the text. I think the issue there is God, Jesus Christ as creator, was able to make wine immediately, something that would take a long time to age. Same thing with Genesis chapter 1. He created the earth and everything on the earth with the appearance of age. So I think it just re- it reiterates the fact that Jesus is the creator. He can make something immediately that looks like it's old. So Jesus is really showing us his divinity here. Yeah. yeah, I'm God because I can change the principles of nature here. And one change thing one here thing to another. Mm-hmm. And one thing is Jesus mm-hmm. didn't do it just halfway. He did it best, right? It wasn't just like, right. hey, this is pretty good wine. It was pretty good wine. And so the question might come up, what was the alcoholic content of the wine in Jesus's day? Is it as We're going to get to that in a minute, now? though. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we might have a discussion. And there's some dispute over that. Okay. Yeah. But one thing we can say here is that Jesus didn't make non alcoholic wine here mm. he did not make grape juice this is this is the good stuff right it's indisputable and um the fact is that wine had a multi-purposes in the new testament for example we're going to see later that paul advises timothy to take some for his stomach so it was a medicine but mm. it was the common table beverage of the day so what about alcoholic content uh there's going to be a little bit of discussion here but there's uh, some differences of opinion, and I don't really know how you resolve this, but some say what, Gary? Well, yeah, some would say that the alcohol content there was basically 2 to 3% where of wine. Let's go, go with wine. Mm-hmm. And um, typically, currently, uh, wine automatically ferments to about 12 to 14%. So, and, and, you know, the archaeological finds, you just don't know because alcohol tends to disperse over time. Sure. And and so it's it's really difficult to to nail that down. Whether it was uh, what we do know that they diluted wine with water, and that's a possibility. Uh, but it seems to me that you know depending on the grape that's being fermented, and I don't know anything about Middle Eastern grapes. Typically, you're going to have a alcohol content somewhere between twelve and fourteen. And by the way. The, the scripture also talks about something. We'll get off the wine. Strong drink. They were able to make something that was even higher concentration than that, apparently, because people did get drunk back, oh, back for in the sure. day. No doubt. If it was only 2 to 3%, you'd have to drink an awful lot of stuff, you know, for, for that to affect you. So there's some question about what the alcohol content was. I think the 2 or 3% comes from the watering down of it. Could and be. let's talk about this a little bit. Uh, what were the water sources that the Jews would uh, get water from? Where did they, they get it from? Either a stream, right? Or, or a well, well. Mm-hmm. and those are are noted for being places of bacteria and uh, other kinds of issues with that can cause health concern. So one of the reasons they used alcohol and mixed it with water was to cut down on this bacteria because the alcohol would kill uh, mm-hmm. what was in the water. Correct. So that was the purpose of it. Um, but they also had other stuff to drink, like cow milk and goat milk, right? They could probably go to Starbucks and pick up a coffee. No doubt. I'm no, 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 that's now. Um, so much, much the same happens in many third world countries today. That water is often contaminated and, and not good for drinking. And in fact, we see this problem as I alluded to with Timothy. He was sick to his stomach. And I can kind of um, identify with that because last weekend I was in the ER for having stomach issues. Um but they didn't advise me to drink a little wine for my stomach instead <laughs> instead of what uh, 
uh, Paul did advise Timothy. Well, since it's not a sin to drink alcohol, can believers drink alcohol, say, socially? Yeah, I think so. (laughs) This is the crux of the problem here, isn't it? This is the question. Um, And we don't want to trivialize it. The truth is, you are permitted to drink alcohol. Mm. What's the one caveat? Don't get drunk. Don't Don't get drunk. Don't overdo. The problem with that is many people don't know where that line is. Mm. And also the line can change because of current conditions that you are feeling in your health. You can be more susceptible to alcohol sometimes, but let's, okay. It's permissible. Don't get drunk. That's the standard. But here's the caveat again. Is it a sin to cause another person to stumble into alcoholic back into addiction or somebody who's never been addicted, but now becomes, um, you know, susceptible to it? What do you guys think? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Uh, We've already kind of briefed that just Mm -hmm. uh, for a little bit. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, you are then responsible for that person let's just say falling away into that situation. So that's again, where, you know, the question is, is, is social drinking in front of someone that's a real issue. I think you, you, you got to kind of cut that off maybe at home on your own. That that's another story. Cause you're not influencing anyone right. else, but once you get out there, I think you got to, I think believers have got to be aware Mm -hmm. that this could be an issue for someone else. Yeah. And you don't know what other people are experiencing or have gone through in their lives when you're out in a public arena, you you just don't know. Gabe, what does Romans 14, 20 advise us? Yeah. Romans 14, 20, let me pull it up. Um, I mean, it just comes down to wisdom, but 14, 20 says, do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All food is clean, but it is wrong for a man to eat anything that causes someone else to stumble. There you go. So we can extrapolate that into drinking as well. So we can make, back then they had the idea, I believe, wasn't it Gary, uh, of meat sacrificed to idols, that kind of idea. So the, the Bible gives us help in choosing whether or not we should drink or abstain from alcohol. Yeah, It begins with the question, as Gabe has just stated, is it wise to drink all alcohol? Mm. Yeah, And the I mean- answer is... Not necessarily, right? Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, the one thing we do know that if you do choose to do it, you must do it in moderation. Yeah. And you must take into your own background disposition, the environmental factors which you were raised with. I came from a teetotaling family, so I didn't have any problems with it. Um, Even though myself and all my brothers as teenagers drank, right? I the least, but uh, it never became a problem with me. But Proverbs 21 says that wine is a mocker and beer is a brawler. Whoever is led astray by them is not wise. We want to do the will of God, and the will of God is following the way of wisdom. Yeah. Yeah. The, the question is why? Like, I don't think you have to ask that why. Like, if you're drinking alcohol, why are you drinking? Is it for a social event? And even if it is, say, not even at the bar, but you're at a restaurant, right? With coworkers, for example, everybody gets a drink. Like you can go along and get a drink, but why? Like, what's the, why not a soda? Why not well, are, a tea? There are good reasons for, there are good reasons for, for some. Um, I am close friends with some Italian families mm-hmm. and it's their history and their culture to drink wine at every meal, every evening meal. Mm-hmm. And so they would enjoy a glass of wine or, um, you know, some beverage uh, yeah. along with their meal. And yeah. and there's nothing wrong with that. And the point, I think the point I was getting to is you could, you could be different, right? And you can be different. And then they ask why, and that leads to conversations, right? To be different as a Christian. Right. So is it unwise to drink alcohol? It can be, it yeah. doesn't necessarily have to be though, right? Is it a sin for a Christian to drink now in public? Let's talk about that. Yeah. That's another good question. <laughs> Should you drink in public, right? I think it also goes back I, last I mean, week. We've last, kind of touched on a little bit of this, yeah. but let's go back and actually answer the question. Yeah. And la- ahead, last yeah. week we talked about tattoos, or last time we talked about tattoos, right? And the kind of the solution we came down to was, again, why? Why should you do this? Is it okay, right? And you walk up to somebody and they see you're covered in tattoos, they make an opinion, right? 
Now go mm-hmm. in a different circumstance. You're at a restaurant, you're at a bar, you're at wherever, and you're drinking alcohol. What are the assumptions people are going to come to when they see you doing that, right? They're going to question you, right? That And especially, especially for unbelievers that think maybe, hey, alcohol should be wrong. If you're a Christian, alcohol should be wrong, right? I thought you were a Christian. Why are you drinking alcohol, right? Mm-hmm. It's just the view people have of you might be flawed if you're doing this in public. Gary, do we live for other people's assumptions? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, I think we got to be careful with that. Mm-hmm. We kind of, I kind of want to go back to Psalm 104, 14, and 15, mm-hmm. because it kind of encapsulates what we're talking about here. Because again, you, you can't be dogmatic on this issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm reading from Psalm 104. It says, you cause, referring to God, you cause the grass to grow for the livestock and plants for man to cultivate, that he may bring forth food from the earth and wine to gladden the heart of men, oil to make his face shine, and bread to strengthen man's heart. So there we have wine sandwiched right in between bread and meat. And all these, like, these are all good things that are provided by God. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you, you, you almost have to ask the question, what does it mean to have your heart gladdened? I have, See, that's an interesting question. I have somebody very close to me that says, God made marijuana too. <laughs> and and it makes my heart glad. There you go. So now we've crossed the Rubicon here. Um, uh, substance abuse is both alcohol and drugs. So, mm. I mean, you have to take that into consideration. And uh, uh, context is king, <laughs> not only in understanding the scriptures, but understanding your own life and understanding the activities you involve yourselves in. So I think Gabe's question is, is it really worth it to enjoy a glass of beer or wine uh, with others, even if you do it in moderation, when you don't know the reaction that you're going to get? You can hope for the best, but that doesn't mean you're going to get it. Yeah. What what does Joseph do? He flees sin, right? Flees evil. What what, The Bible doesn't say get it. I've talked about this before. The Bible doesn't say get as close to the line as possible. I'm just about there. Oh, almost a sin, right? Because then you make one mistake and boom, you've crossed the line. Right. Same yeah. thing with alcohol. Yeah. Why, why drink? Oh, two drinks. That's good. But the third drink that's crossing it. So I'll stay at like two and a half, two and three quarters <laughs> and I'll be good. And then it just doesn't, it doesn't work that way. It just doesn't happen. That Gary, way. Gary, you want to read Romans 14, 22 and 23 for us? Sure. Uh, whatever you believe about these things, keep between yourself and God. Blessed is the man who does not condemn himself by what he approves. But the man who has doubts is condemned if he eats. Uh, or we could include there if he drinks, drinks, because his eating or drinking is not from faith. And everything that does not come from faith is sin. Mm. So, so we have to be pretty well assured in our own minds what we're doing, don't we? Yeah. 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 So it's a question or not a question of drunkenness versus self-control, you know, Um I could probably get inebriated on smelling the stuff at this point in time. It's been so long. Maybe one drink, I don't know. So where is that line between knowing what I'm doing and losing self-control? And that's the Bible never gives us detailed instructions on this. It does, however, give us principles that every Christian should consider. Scripture prohibits, as we've said, Mm. ad nauseum, drunkenness, but it doesn't uh, prohibit drinking. If a Christian chooses to drink alcohol, then he should do so with moderation and self-control. But, and that's but, the key. But, but wait, wait, wait. Proverbs 31 and verse uh, five mm-hmm. or verse six says, let beer be for those who are perishing. Wine for those who are in anguish. Let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their misery no there more. You go. So the lost can drink all they want. <laughs> by the way, by the way, the translation beer in the NIV really should be strong drink. Right. It should be. Right. Right. Yep. Um, did they have beer in the New Testament? I doubt it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, okay. Um, before we leave, I'd like to share 10 reasons Christians should not drink alcohol or think about not eating drinking alcohol. I don't know if we'll cover all 10. No, let's just uh, do a few at least. Yeah. Okay. The first yeah. one warns that, and we can just go right past that drunkenness will get you in big trouble in one text that says go to hell but it it most likely means loss of reward number two Mm -hmm. is drunkenness is not the only thing condemned about drinking what else does the bible condemn that's associated with drinking Mm. well i mean it could be associated with basically partying that's true yeah yeah we got a college kid here that's uh, sitting with us do you guys get party over at word of life uh hardy hardy (laughs) hey who's bringing the 
pig. I knew it was a party <laughs> school. I just knew it. So what are the three things? Drunkenness, Drunkenness revelries, revelries, drinking parties. Or drinking parties, yeah. 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 All of these kind of relate to activities involved with drinking to excess, right? Excess. Okay. Uh, have you ever been to Mardi Gras? No. Uh, when I was in the Navy back long, long time ago, we went to uh, Mobile, Alabama, which has a Mar- Mardi Gras. And uh, it was unbelievable. Yeah, it's <laughs> it kind of crazy. It gets, yeah. it gets crazy, yeah. The third reason, believers are high priests and Christians are to use, you know, now we go back to do the things talked about in the Old Testament for priests now become relevant to us in the New Testament. I think it's really a good question to explore. But one thing we do know is that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, right? And so we're not supposed to let unclean things pass through our bodies. I don't know. Does does that relate to this or not? I'm not sure it does. Yeah, it might be a stretch, but you know, there's, I think we could just kind of add these things up. I think the concept of a higher standard though, like talking in the Old Testament, kings, high priests, right? Maybe it applies today to like pastors, those in leadership in the church. They're held to a higher standard than other believers. Maybe maybe that concept comes into play. That's a whole nother discussion because I'm not sure I agree with that (laughs) at all. Um, well, there is a Astros, comment about elders are not to be drunkards. But, right. You know, that's yeah. you know, another. We're supposed that, to be temperate. Yes. But pastors are just men and we're just part of the body of Christ. And we're not the CEO or the head guy. We're supposed to be within a group of spiritual leaders, not just a single guy. Gary mm-hmm. doesn't agree with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Christians are saints, which means we're holy, called out. Believers are to be temperate. Even one drink. Now this is number six. I kind of blew through the other ones. That's right. Even one drink impairs judgment or can it can judgment. for some not mm-hmm. all but can. so that's that's a, a very important point to make and the more you drink the less apparent where that line becomes so um number seven was which we talked about extensively our behavior can cause others to stumble it could be dangerous to our testimony i think that's where gabe uh is really yep uh, camping mm-hmm. on you want to talk about that gabe any anymore yeah I mean, our behavior should glorify God. And the fact is, you see over and over again, we're supposed to be a witness, right? And it's just, how can we be the best witness possible? I think you can be the best witness possible by, um, at the very least, considering avoiding drinking, right? Am I saying you drink, you sin? No, no. I just know, especially when Paul talks about in Romans, right? You, you, you can be convicted in your heart of certain things that may necessarily not be a sin for other people. For me, I just, mm-hmm. for me, and I've been blessed where kind of like you, grandpa, I, my parents weren't um, drunkards. They didn't drink. I, I haven't been a really around that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So mm-hmm. like, I don't have to struggle with it as much, but I do feel the conviction. Stay a little bit away from alcohol. Right. Don't consider that. I did have one situation when I was a kid <laughs> where I did, I did. Um, oh, I like this a, confession. confession. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> I, was like, I was like 10. I was at a we wedding. Are priests. <laughs> <laughs> I was at a wedding and I took a big swig of what I thought was lemonade. Definitely wasn't lemonade. Uh, spit it back in with somebody else's cup. Put it back on the Ew. table and walked away. <laughs> so, I, don't that's gross. I don't know how that worked out, but <laughs> that's my experience. Number, number nine is, and this is the one that we kind of disagreed on. Biblical wine is not the same modern drinks. But one thing we can be sure of, you can't justify drinking just because Jesus made wine and Paul tells him to uh, Timothy to take it for a stomach because everything's context, context, mm-hmm. context. Number 10, our last, we have a myriad of choices of things we can drink. I think that's an important one. Yeah. Yeah. We have a lot of drink. You know, let me go back to sure. uh, the thing about Jesus drinking. Um, I knew that you last, do that. <laughs> yeah, I'm going there. Um, at the Passover meal. Yes. Every Passover had four cups of wine. <laughs> that's true. Two, two before dinner and two after when Jesus identified himself with the third cup, which in a Passover right. meal, it's called the cup of redemption. Right. And so uh, they had those at the Passover, but interesting thing. And I've got the, this quote. From Jesus Matthew also 20. compared himself to the Passover lamb. That doesn't mean I want to be one. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but here's what he says to the disciples uh-huh. in Matthew 26, 29. He says, right after that last supper, I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my father's mm-hmm. kingdom. So again, uh, I, I think if we want to summarize, and we've gotten through quite a bit of material in this short amount of time, mm-hmm. um, 
the scripture definitely does not condemn drinking. Right. It does condemn drunkenness. And I think uh, that's pretty much where I think we can leave that lie. Would that include and, tipsy? Would that include being high? I don't know. What what is a merry heart, dude? <laughs> I think <laughs> that's where you that's where the the issue is right there. Yeah. I would say, and in my opinion, being tipsy or being high, you're starting to lose control. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Uh qu- question on that passage. I just I think it's very interesting. In my father's kingdom. Does that mean it will be in the thousand year reign or is this in the eternal state? Because my understanding is I would argue that the thousand year kingdom is Jesus's kingdom. And then he turns it over according to first Corinthians 15, 27 to his yep. father. And that would be in the eternal state. Then I agree. I agree. So that's so. an interesting, very interesting passage. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? I guess we'll find out. Yeah. But today we have a myriad of choices. You can go to the grocery store and pick up hundreds of different kinds of juices and soft drinks and milks and teas and also alcohol. Go to Costco and there's alcohol coffee. everywhere. Coffee. That's our that's our next most Google question. Is it okay for Christians to drink coffee from it's Starbucks? A drug. <laughs> <laughs> it's a drug. No. Nah. One thing I did want to mention is that. We've been commanded over and over and over again to be watchful, to be on the alert. And that's one of the things that we must take mm-hmm. into consideration. Are we dulling our alertness and our watchfulness uh, in the coming of Christ? So it's something to think about. By the way, that word for alertness has mm-hmm. a uh, an original meaning of abstaining from alcohol. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Greek word for it. Mm-hmm. And then it broadened, like many meanings, uh, right. To include being sober or temperate, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, and so, and then along with that, being watchful. So, uh, so yeah, I think uh, um, I think that's very important to be uh, c- to consider. Okay, well, we appreciate you tuning in to our podcast number eight on the most googled questions in the Bible. Is it okay for a Christian to drink, even socially? I hope we've helped you come to your decision in your own mind. And uh, we just want you to know that we appreciate you. Please hit the notification bell and the subscribe button because we want you to be able to uh, tune in and hear all the things that we have to offer. We don't make anything from these broadcasts. We're not benefiting in any way. We do it because we love the body of Christ and we want to see people live for the glory of God. So thank you. I'm Scott Moffitt. This is Gabe Penfield. Raise your hand, Gabe. And Gary Karwaski. God bless you. Have a Merry Christmas. And stay sober. Merry Christmas. Stay sober. (laughs) Bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Book Podcast. If you liked what you heard and want to support us, like, follow, subscribe on any podcasting platform, on YouTube, on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Simply type in at Hear the Book Pod, at Hear the Book Pod. Thank you. See you next time.